Reviewing subwoofers, especially big, heavy, and expensive ones like the Dual Rel number 31 that you can see there behind me, is really not easy because where do you base your reference point? Now you could take a subwoofer out into a field, play it to its maximum, measure using ground plane, and look at the output data and the distortion data, and that data can be very useful. But it can also be very misleading if you don't really understand it, or if you only use it in isolation. Because I think when you put subwoofers in a room, your assessment metric of them changes anyway, and fundamentally will always come back to some kind of subjective opinion. But putting subwoofers in rooms and setting them up can be a very technical thing. I mean, I do that all the time as part of my Dirac calibration work, so I'm fully aware of you know what this entails, you know, perfect subwoofer placement, equalization, all of these things. So that's what makes this review for me of the REL number 31 subwoofers really interesting because they are quite a large footprint subwoofer. And I needed to make sure that you know I could get them on camera. I needed to make sure that I could get access to all the kit on the racks that you can see there behind me. So that really limited their placement. They kind of had to be placed where they are. These Rail 31s have given me noticeably the best musical bass that I've ever had from subwoofers in this room before. And also the best integration between subwoofer and speakers that I've ever had in this room before. And Gone has the fear of, wow, will the subwoofers keep up with the speakers? It's actually the other way around. Will the speakers keep up with the subwoofers? But let's come back a bit. The number 31s are RHEL's current smaller flagship subwoofers. And they are 31 years in the making to some extent, hence the name. And they feature RHEL's current best 12-inch carbon fiber diaphragm driver with a limited to 900 watt class D amplifier. And they are a sealed design with a very special cabinet that's almost teardrop in shape. And when you have the grills on, and I never normally have the grills on anything, but with these rails, the grills help to extend the curvature shape and I think make the subwoofers look even less typical subwoofer square box. And these are lovely looking by subwoofer standards and very stand out in general. And then there are the nice curved shapes here and there and for the handle recesses and the grooves cut into the top, the nice footer system and that carbon rail plaque on the top. All touches of class that diehard performance subwoofer enthusiasts might see as eccentricities. But trust me, when you have these big subwoofers in your room day after day after day, all of those little touches of class just make a difference to how you feel about that product, I think, living with them in your room. And they also definitely touch on you know, that kind of warm part of your heart, that kind of pride of pride of ownership part of your heart. So I appreciate all of these extra little design cues. But they are also quite a large footprint subwoofer by traditional, typical, smaller on purpose domestic subwoofers. So you should definitely measure twice before you buy them. But bigger is definitely better when it comes to subwoofer performance. And on the rear is a typical, in a way, rail subwoofer amplifier plate that has lots of connections for high level, line level or more. But you will see something that's missing and that's controls because with the number 31 subwoofers, you get a very lovely and heavy carbon remote control that allows you to set up the subwoofers from the listening position. Now I will apologize for what I'm about to say to nearly every other Rel Acoustic subwoofer owner because this remote control system, it is a hundred million times better than controlling the subwoofer for the adjustments on the back. Being able to sit at your seat, of course, is an advantage. And I actually think this is a really nice way to do it that's almost on a par with app control. It's kind of different, so yeah, probably on a par, it's just kind of different. And the controller allows you to adjust all of the important things like your phase, your high level crossover and level, volume level, your point one or line level volume and parametric equalization systems built in that you can adjust to, to tune the subwoofer sound in your room 
all from the comfort of your listening chair via this remote control. And it is a line of sight remote, so you have to point it at the subwoofers you're controlling or subwoofer. And that can get a little finicky sometimes. You can adjust both of them when you're just meant to do the one. So this does, in a way, feel a little bit more old school because it's like an old school remote control compared to an app control. But at the same time, I like it. I like having something big and chunky and, you know, solid in my hands to be able to, you know, adjust all these things. So yeah, I like it. I like this controller. I think it's really nice. For testing clarification, I have only used the dual number 31s in a two-channel hi-fi situation. I've not tested them for their home theater. And I've tested them only using a high-level connection, a real high-level connection. So that is taking the signal from the amplifier's speaker output using Rail's baseline blue high-level cable, and I've set them up and tested them that way. So that is quite a, a, a railway and a traditional railway of setting up subwoofers. And because I'm reviewing them at the same time I'm reviewing other products, I've had to put them in the system and then disconnect them multiple times. You know, if I'm trying to review just speakers, I have to listen to just the speakers or just the amplifier. So they've been in and out of the system multiple times. So I've got to hear their benefit across multiple, lots of different systems, lots of different speakers, lots of different times. So it's been really interesting because every single time I've added the rails to the system, the uplift in overall performance of the system's gone up exponential amounts every single time. Now, of course, how you set subwoofers up in a room will massively affect the performance and the sound you'll hear from them. And I've already mentioned why they were placed where they are, but I also had help from Rail's own Rob Hunt, who you might have seen in previous videos that I've made. So it was interesting because Rob set them up in what I would class as like a traditional hi-fi subwoofer neutral fashion. So he set them up really just to support and underpin just below where the speakers were rolling off. And at the time it was my Mission 770. So Rob crossed the subwoofers over at about 30 hertz and just had them filling in just the deepest stuff. And they was able to do that really, really easily. It was barely even on and they were supporting, you know, the, the missions. It's just cr crazy, too easy really in that regard. But they were so transparent. The bass was so transparent. And again, couldn't tell where the subwoofers were starting and the speakers were finishing. And what was interesting is just crossing the subwoofers over that low, we did obviously plenty of AB comparisons to hear the effect. They were still having a quite a significant effect actually on the overall system sound, even crossed over that low. But I like a lot of bass in music. I like bass that adds real presence and warmth and scale and impact to me at the listening position. It really fills the room with this type of pressure. So I got on with, you know, messing around with setting the subwoofers up myself, testing them, pushing them higher, pushing them much louder and messing around. And I ended up settling on a crossover around, I think it was 46 hertz. And I had the subwoofers turned up quite a bit more than they were before so I could get much more of a meaty, ballsy, full, impactful sound across pretty much, you know, all music's what I like. But what was interesting is as I was, test as I was testing the subwoofers and pushing them, I, I could tell they could easily have gone much more in terms of their output and much higher in terms of their frequencies, and that bass would have stayed exactly the same. But I wasn't able to do that because I was hitting a limit of what the speakers were able to do and what the room was able to accept. So what happened was, I kind of hit a, a performance plateau limit of what I could get from the subwoofers, and that set a standard, and then the speakers had to come up and match that standard. That was really an interesting way to set the subwoofers up, and it's why I said at the start, you know, gone is the, the fear of, you know, can the subwoofers keep up? It really was a case of can the speakers keep up? And the first system I tested was my Mission 770 speakers with the Synthesis Roma AC510, which is a, in inverted commas, high power tube amplifier that drove the missions easily. And listening to that system, you would say, yeah, it has a really nice and full sound, very tubey like sound with very good bass. And yet, when you add the number 31s, you realize that's not really the case because adding the rails firstly gave the system a greater sense of scale and the system sounded much bigger and much more expensive. Now, of course, adding the rails made the system much bigger and much more expensive. But what I'm referring to here is 
The effect of adding the, the subwoofers didn't just kind of just extend the bass a bit from the speakers, adding the 31s changed the whole sound really of the whole system. It made the whole system sound bigger, grander, more expansive, more immersive, more impressive, and therefore much more expensive from all the same electronics. It wasn't just adding just a bit of bass, it was adding more than that. Well, how was that happening? Well, I would describe it as, yeah, obviously having more bass pressure in the room, more warmth, more power, more, more feel and scale of bass, just extends the perception, extends the sound stage really out into the room more, extends the, the power of the whole sound into the room. But probably more importantly for this greater change was the increase in solidity. So all of a sudden, every element of the soundstage across and behind behind and forward all sounded more solid and more sure-footed. So a great example would be a double bass player. Of course, you would expect a subwoofer to solidify that instrument. But it was also solidifying piano, drums, guitar, and probably most importantly was vocals, male and female. So everything sounded more solid and more sure-footed more planted across the soundstage. Of course, that's a really big improvement. And coupled with that would be, because there is now more bass presence and pressure and warmth in the room, as you turn the music up louder, the system can play louder with just a greater sense of ease. That kind of tension and stress that you get with, a, with an audio system, a hi-fi system, as you turn the volume up, now that was not there at all. That same, at the same volume, there was no stress, no tension in the music at all. Everything was now relaxed and sounding smoother and richer, ple more pleasing and fundamentally more enjoyable. So what I'm really referring to here is like, when I talk about a big difference, we're talking about greater scale, greater warmth, greater impact, greater immersiveness, more solid and sure-footed for every instrument, synth sounds, even the treble sounds more precise in space, and you're getting a greater sense of ease and relaxation at louder volumes. The next system I tested with the Rails was the Galleon TS120 SE tube amplifier with the Mission 770 and the Sonos Faber Serafino 22,000 pound speakers. The Galleon tube amp again delivers excellent bass. And when you listen to it in isolation, you'd be more than happy with the results. But after you hear what the number 31s do, which is the same again, it makes the system sound bigger, bolder, richer, more solid, greater in terms of the sense of scale and immersion, and essentially making the system sound much bigger and much more expensive. So once you've heard all of that, and then you take the subwoofers away, that big scale, very three dimensional sound shrinks down and now starts to sound quite two or maybe 2.5 D dimensional rather than 3D. And of course it's not, this is you know a couple of minutes before, an hour or so before you was listening to just that system on its own and it sounded really impressive and three dimensional, but not so much after you've heard the effects of the rail. So what I found really interesting about this initial testing was that, you know, if you own or are a user of a tube amplifier, even very, very good ones, the effect of subwoofers, especially subwoofers this good, I think can be really dramatic and have a really big impact on your overall system sound. But my last test was deliberately going to be a much tougher one for the Rails, as I was using a big power Macintosh amp, the MA352, which has 320 watts of power into the 4-ohm Sonos Faber Serafino. And it drove them much better for bass than the Galleon tube amp, as you would expect, in terms of the bass output scale and authority, making the speakers sound almost subwoofer-like already. So I actually was expecting the effect of the number 31s to be greatly lessened here, obviously with the better starting point. But to my surprise and amazement, it actually sounded better. The effect of the 31s actually was even more great than it had been before. And I can only put that down to the fact that the Serafino speakers were now keeping up with the subwoofers much more. They was maybe sounding faster and just the, the balance, the blend between the subwoofers and speakers was now better. So everything just blended together better and created an even bigger, more impressive overall sense of improvement from the subwoofers in to the subwoofers out. So yeah, after you've done all this kind of testing, subwoofers like this, they leave a lasting mark on you. And actually, the last few days of this review, just before shooting this, I've made some system changes. I've made a few other things, changes in here. And this is without a doubt the best overall sound I've ever had in this listening room before. And I definitely would not say that without the real number 31s in the system. <laughs> Thank you.
to this point, the, the differences and improvements that I've been talking about from adding the Rail 31s to the system and then taking them away, it would be possible to achieve similar results or a similar or an, an improvement in sound, not the same, but an improvement in sound from other very good subwoofers. And Rail make other very good subwoofers like their T-Range, the S-Range and Carbon Specials. I've had experience with all of them now, I think. So why would you spend more? And you would need to spend more on the number 31s compared to the others because they are expensive subwoofers at £7,000 each. So that means this subwoofer pair is a £14,000 subwoofer pairing. That's a lot of money for subwoofers. So it essentially becomes quite a difficult question to answer. So I'll try and do my best to talk about the differences that I've experienced with the different rail subwoofers in this room. And if I draw you back to my recent review of a pair of S510 subwoofers, which I can compared to a T9X subwoofer. And I said that the 510 subwoofers sounded more rounded and more voluptuous. They just had like a more kind of rounded, bold type of character. Well, the number 31s do that, but much further on again. They sound like large subwoofers for this big, bold, room-filling, hitting type of sound. And they really have this big, warm character to them, which is really nice and really impressive. But they also have a small subwoofer depth and lightness of touch. So they're very fast, but also bold and characterful. And how would I know this? How did I test this? Well, interestingly, once I had the Serafino speakers working to their best and this fantastic integration going on, of course I could tell subwoofers were playing because of the extra output and the bass authority and especially in the deeper notes, how much more powerful they were. But for the bass details, the intricate details of guitar or drums or synth sounds or you know the speedy bass you get in drum and bass music, I could not tell whether it was the speakers creating the details or the subwoofers. There was no way for me to tell at all where the bass was coming from and what was producing what. So that means the bass output from a transparency, speed, and cleanliness point of view from the Rel 31s was as good or as fast as dual seven inch drivers in the 22,000 pound Sonus Faber Serafinos. That was that fast or as fast. So that's like, <laughs> when you think about that for a second, it's like, <laughs> from a musical bass point of view, what kind of more could you ask for? Because the, the 31s, they're as fast as the Serafinos and yet they can play much louder, much bigger, definitely much bigger, deeper down. So kind of, what more can you ask for with subwoofers really when you think about it, you know? And I personally love how the bass from the 31s has that big, full, rich, impactful throb factor, but it has no blur in either. So you can really hear the subtlety in bass, like I've not really experienced before, especially when it starts to go deeper and you have like, like rumbly, thunderous bass. There's still loads of detail in that. Considering that these are big subwoofers really, big output subwoofers really, playing in a smaller room with no advanced room correction coming before them. What I also personally really love is when I listen to Guilty, my Guilty Pleasure music, which at the moment is sub-focus drum and bass, I'm really enjoying that their new album. When you listen to that type of music with the subwoofers in the system, it has that real impact, bang, like the real big, bold bass impact that that music's supposed to have. And when you take them out of the system, of course the Serafino speakers still do a great job, but they don't present that music with the same level of impact and scale and authority that that you're supposed to have for that club type of music. So the subwoofers really add that extra level of impact and, all, and, and, and presence and feeling for that music. But you can flip the music to something like a Hans Zimmer movie soundtrack. And when you listen to any Hans Zimmer movie soundtrack with the 31s in the system, it has the same grandness and scale and impact that you would get if you was watching that particular movie through a home theater system and again you take the 31s out of the system listen to just the serafino speakers yes they do a great job but it just doesn't have the same level of impact that, that movie soundtrack is supposed to have that you get with the 31s in the system but then you can listen to you know more cultured music maybe some classical music not my thing but I'd listen to some, or I listen to a lot of female jazz type of music. And, or even I listen to some Skillet, which is, you know, my, my children's favorite music at the moment, like some rock, not really heavy rock, but some rock music. And the 31s just add something that the Serafino speakers don't do on their own in terms of scale and impact and dynamism and just the way the sound 
fills the room and becomes more impactful and immersive. And it's a really big, big, big difference and a really big performance uplift, massive uplift in performance. And again, this <laughs> it's very hyperbole talk, but it's legit, no bullshit, exactly the truth of the effects that they've been having. So I can't say anything about them other than that they are absolutely awesome music subwoofers. Absolutely awesome in every regard that I've been able to test and experience so far. But what about negatives? Well, I think, you know, the first one would be they are quite large footprint subwoofers. So you might like that because of the benefit of that, but maybe your significant other wouldn't. And of course, the more bass pressure you put into a room, the more that's going to bleed into other you know, parts of your home. So it's just something to think about. It's the same with every subwoofer. So it's not really something to think about. I do think one point could be if you're a, a diehard subwoofer performance enthusiast for the £14,000 asking price, of course you could buy a lot of other maybe dual 15, dual 18 inch subwoofers and that's going to move more air and have more impact in certain regards. If that's your goal, maybe that would be a, a better way to spend your money, maybe. But I think if you're looking for subwoofers for a hi-fi system to underpin and enhance the performance of a hi-fi system. I've had loads of subwoofers in this room before. Spent hours, weeks, and months setting them up using advanced room correction and every trick in the book that I can think of. But I can't and haven't experienced better subwoofers for underpinning music in this listening room. I really haven't. I, you know, the Rail 31s, they are awesome. They are expensive and they are big, but they are beautiful and they are awesome and Rail can have a real fight on their hands getting these subwoofers back from me. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed the review, please hit the thumbs up. And if you like my take on hi-fi reviewing in general, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.